Omicron. Falcon hates puns and thinks that they're all wrong. One's American and one is an Aussie. Talking about StarCraft 2 and the esports scene. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad to be here for yet another uh, podcast of the week. Yes, it is the podcast of the week. Um, yeah, well, hmm, I can see how it could be interpreted both ways. It's kind of like saying, like, bi weekly, right? That can mean a couple different things. Right. Anywho, we do this once a week, which I'm sure if you're listening, you probably know that. Probably, but no guarantees. Yeah, yeah. Deal. Anywho, how are things down in Strayland these days? Mm, yes, you're in the throes of winter. Mm hmm. Oh, which one did you get? Oh, okay. Cool, cool. Yeah, nice. And you're feeling a little rundown. Yeah, that might have something to do with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the problem with like anything to do with health and the human body, right? There's never one thing. Like, there's it's so complicated. There's so many different factors going on that, like, this one thing made me feel this way. It's all it's his fault. It's like, ah. okay, I don't know. I guess maybe if you take cocaine, it has a big responsibility for how you feel. But most of the time, it's more complicated than that, I think. Yeah. Any who's. Well, uh, and you get your second one in a couple of weeks, or what's the plan there? Cool, cool. All right, good deal. Well, the U.S. is pretty much just stuck at about 50% vaccination. Um, we've been hovering around 48 and 49 for like the last month, so it really does feel like, for the most part, People who want it have gotten it, and a lot of people don't want it, which is uh, fantastic. So, uh, yeah, that's where that's where we are right now. It's it's always so funny to me because the government. There's been a couple different announcements over the last couple of weeks where it's like people who are unvaccinated should wear masks in public places. It's like, do you not understand? These are the same people. The people that don't want to wear masks also are not vaccinated. It doesn't help for you to say this. I mean, maybe, maybe there are a couple people out there who don't want the vaccine, but they're cool with wearing a mask. And I, okay, I guess thumbs up for you, sort of. But um, there are not many of those, I don't think. It just always makes me giggle. I'm always like, oh, you guys, you know, right? Like they know, like the person who typed this up and sent it out was like, this is a ridiculous sentence. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, anywho. Yeah. That's why you don't detect my Yeti. <sighs> oh no, are you quiet? No, I was, I was silent as far as I could tell. Oh, Listen. I watched the stream on mute, so I wouldn't have been able oh, to tell. I, I just happened to look down and look at the bars flickering, and the, the my yeah. one was not moving, the your one was, so. Yeah. Now it is, man, because what, what did you have to do? Uh, for some reason, it just thinks the Yeti isn't the Yeti, so I tell it the Yeti is the Yeti, and then it detects the Yeti. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. But what it thinks Roll the down. Yeti actually is is also called the Yeti. So it's, yeah. So you have two Yetis in your nope. system configuration. Nope, I have one. Windows thinks you have two. Nope, I have one. Right? Nope, I go into Windows, oh. I have one, one Yeti. Oh. It just... Doesn't, doesn't work. Okay, yeah. fair enough. <laughs> hmm. Uh, Anywho, 
So back to the COVID stuff. There, uh, apparently, the UK has been having a big problem with the Delta variant, oh, yeah? which is like it's a new strain of COVID. But from what they're reporting, um, even though you know vaccinated people are catching this Delta variant, the hospitalization and death rate is super, super, super low. Okay. So it's kind of the same thing that the COVID vaccine does for regular COVID. It doesn't prevent you from getting it necessarily, but if you do get it, your odds of going to the hospital and dying are really not great. So. So that's the whole deal there. So hopefully, I don't know. There's talk about getting a third, um, a third injection for people who already have two. So okay. I don't know. I don't know where we're going with this, but Fair enough. I'm okay. I don't know. I'm okay with shots that don't really bother me. And again, this whole Novavax thing that I did, just no side effects, whatever. I just, I don't have any concerns. So I can't wait for six months time when someone's like going through the paperwork, you know, like a peer review on the study. And find out that <laughs> everyone just got double doses of like the the placebo. <laughs> everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. That's why you have no side effects. Yeah, that would explain so much. It would. Yeah. I mean, that I don't know. Uh, if you look at some of the reports for it, people do report, um, you know, few to no side effects for them too. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess your theory of nobody actually got the vaccine <laughs> not, not everyone, would be legit. Just the people in your study that you did. Oh, okay. It's so not, localized. Not, not everyone. I'm not saying they're trying to fight it with placebo. <laughs> <laughs> well, accidentally. Right? The whole point is it was an accident. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Good times. Good times in the year 2021. Mm -hmm. Everyone's just happy all the time. There are no problems. I think that's accurate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we talked about the whole Blizzard stuff. Uh, um, yeah, we talked about the last week. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so to today, President Brack decided to step down from Blizzard. Whether he was oh. let go or resigned is a little unclear. I would assume he was asked to. I mean, whether or not he went. Early, I think so too. Uh, is relevant but he might have wanted to he might have been like you guys are gonna like get me out of here now i'll take that boat <laughs> yeah i mean brr, it's a mess we talked about that it's a huge mess mm -hmm. being partially responsible for cleaning it up is a ton of work for sure so yeah if you just like they came to him and he was like i'm cool <laughs> i'll go do something else yeah i wouldn't be surprised it does seem just from different stuff i've read on the internet it doesn't seem like he was part of the problem at all like, nobody's ever reported that he was an issue. But if you're the president of a company where this is so deeply entrenched and happening all the time and it continues to happen, the buck's got to stop somewhere, man. So yeah. at this point, this time, I guess it stopped with him. Yep, just stopped with him. Him and his $100 million severance package. Yeah. Yeah. Poor, and poor Brack. Poor Brack. What's he ever going to do? Was it $100 million? Yeah. Holy smokes. Never mind. Yeah, there's no no block no buck stopping here at all. They're like, hey, Jeez. we'll let you go. Maybe they'll think that's good enough. We'll see if we need to keep doing things later. Yeah, no no no, for sure. They just they have this like soundboard on their desk. Kotick does, and he just like presses a button mm -hmm. and then it fires a president of the blizzard, then he watches the monitor and sees if that's good enough. <laughs> right? And then he presses another button and it's like another press release. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, Just uh, keep pressing buttons at random until it stops. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, there's a lot of really funny jokes coming out. Like Blizzard press release will uh, now rotate between Infinity Ward, Treyarch, and um, who's the other one? Because they're all Activision Studios that take uh, turns making Call of Duty. So one year it'll come out of Infinity Ward, the next year it'll come out of Treyarch, and the next year it comes out of Sledgehammer. Ah. Uh. So press releases will now be written. <laughs> by those three studios and rotate on a yearly basis. They'll be developed by different studios. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. That's good. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I did also see that somebody mentioned that the third party... Um, what's the word? They're a law firm. The law firm, yeah. The law firm mm -hmm. that they've hired to come in and have a look has a massive anti-union stance 
and typically uh-huh. comes in and says, here's what you can do to prevent your workforce from unionizing against you. <laughs> Where I really saw that. Employer. Amazon Amazon specifically hired them yeah. to like quell union talk. <laughs> it's just like, okay, look. <laughs> we need to make a show guys... of something happening. We don't want things to actually happen, though. Right. <laughs> Yeah. So that's not great. Not great. Not great. Not great. More things that are not great. Blah. Mm-hmm. Very blah. Super blah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Did we talk about... We talked about Dark winning GSL. Did mm-hmm. we? Yeah. We did. Yeah. That happened mm-hmm. before the pod. Yep. Okay. I just... I like bringing up when Zerg win GSL. It makes me feel happy. <laughs> it should get inside. <laughs> yeah, that's. Yeah. I mean, good, good for him. Yep. Yep. Dark's I cool. Mean, I saw somebody saying something about GSL qualifiers are done for the next season. Oh, um, okay. So that's qualifiers into Code A, I think. Um, right. So, who do we have? Special and Ryung Advance. Wow, Ryung's still around. Uh, Creator and Enoch. Mm-hmm. SOS, Gumiho. Classic and Percival. Yep. Cool. They go, yep. To code, they go to Code A, I believe. And they got a long road ahead of them. Yep. But hey, still in it. That's cool. Still in it. Yeah, according to the Wikipedia page, uh, Parting Trap, Bunny, Dark, DRG, Rogue, Maru, and Zone have already qualified. So mm-hmm. they're just waiting. <laughs> like, fight amongst yourselves, Code. <laughs> when you guys are all sufficiently beat up, you can come up and compete against us. Mm-hmm. I did see somebody complaining about that on Reddit the other day. Like, I don't like this whole Code thing because, yeah, like good players get knocked out in Code and don't actually make it to the code s thing and then we're deprived of them and it's like well i would just thought if you know if they're good enough they don't get knocked out in code a do they Mm, no Mm -mm. if they're good enough if they're good enough big if some good players hey lenox in there what's up lenox yeah just cast a lenox game against gumio gumio did weird crazy mech stuff and lenox was like what and he died (laughs) <laughs> oh, it was a good game. He literally typed in chat, what? And then GG. <laughs> that is not true. But that would be funny. Okay, yeah, I'd be going. I would have believed it. <laughs> I don't know. I did, we talked about this, I think, somewhere else. But Lenok, he just has this incredible resume. Tastosis couldn't get enough of him. He was this young up-and-coming kid that was taking matches off legends like Nada and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then just sort of stopped winning type things. Disappeared into the ether. He did. His last premier win was 2014. Wow. Yeah. So it's been a minute. It's been a hot I minute. mean, not sorry, not even win. Like placing in the top four. The last time he placed in the top four of a premier tournament was in 2014. Wow. When was his last win then? <laughs> His last first place was 2012 MLG Fall Championship. Okay, so the game had been out for like a year and a half and nobody knew what to do. Okay. A f- fact. So, I mean, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Look, this is the this is the potting problem. He's he won a championship at the same time potting was winning world championships. Do we Okay. Count it? <laughs> so where's your cutoff then? At what point does it become the modern game where players know what they're doing? Uh this patch. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, that makes it easy. I, I, I would say probably probably Legacy of the Void. Um, I would I would put it around now. All right, so fall 2015. Yeah. Okay. I I'm mean, down. Uh, you know, honors and respect to everyone who won t- tournaments and championships and wings and hots, but you don't count. <laughs> to put it bluntly. Don't count. All right. Uh, I'll let everybody know. Good. Everyone who's won a premier tournament uh, before Legacy of the Void is... uh, I assume you have them on an email list. 
that you could just yeah, yeah. No, no, no i actually have already that set up people that have won tournaments okay. since legacy of the void and then everyone else is on the other list so right yeah mm -hmm. just shoot them a quick email let them know that unfortunately they're not considered true champions anymore <laughs> they're uh false champions playing at a time when nobody knew what was going on did, did, and they just got lucky they didn't get lucky <laughs> They got better than everyone else at a game where no one knew what they were doing. Exactly. Yeah, that's like yeah. lucky, but with preparation. Hmm. Slight preparation. It's a, it's a combination of both luck and preparation. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. This is interesting. So in 2011, MLG Pro Circuit, mm -hmm. he four ones Naniwa to take the championship, first place finish, gets fifty thousand dollars for it. Wow. Yeah. And then he takes first place at DreamHack Open Stockholm, which is another premier tournament in 2013, and goes home with $9,000. Okay, so he was he was the Korean flying across the before region lock, just stealing foreigners' lunch money. Okay, that's what it, um, it, it doubly doesn't count if he's taking it off foreigners, right? I mean, he beat Life, and he beat MC, and... Life's a Korean Zerg player. Who? I've never heard of that player. <sighs> Are you being sarcastic? Of course. It's life. Oh, you leave life alone just because he's a match fixer. <laughs> no. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you stop defending him. He's a match fixer. <sighs> Fine. Uh, he beat first. He's a Korean Protoss. KT Rolster. Who? Yeah. I'm just saying, he was beating Koreans. Sure, he beat Naniwa once, or twice, actually. Mm -hmm. He beat Naniwa twice to get, win these firsts. Mm -hmm. But the, the bigger point is that he took home $50,000 in 2011 for a first-place premier finish. That's true. And then his final first-place finish ever, he won $9,000. Maybe he was like, getting first place isn't even worth it anymore. Mm -hmm. That's a massive like pay cut. Screw this. I'm just going to dink around and like compete in minor tournaments and stuff. Especially if you got a pay for your own flights and accommodation out to your events yeah exactly if you can just stay at home and win a hundred bucks for beating you know six other scrubs do that yep that might be what he decided to do it's more probable maybe not to be top tier i want to interview leenock and be like did you give up <laughs> why are you back did now you, did you stop competing hard because the prize money wasn't there anymore that would be a good conversation i'm sure he'd be very frank and open about it oh yeah absolutely why did you start sucking so much in 2014? <laughs> uh, I would love to know his reasons. Because, like, he didn't retire or anything. He kept competing. Has he done military? Uh, scroll, 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 scroll. Yes. Okay. When? When is next? Military. It does not say. It just says he fulfilled his military service. But there's nothing in the Wikipedia article about when he did that. Look at his results and then just find, find a, a gap. Find a two-year period where there's absolutely nothing. Because it'll probably be sometime between 2014 and I imagine 2017. No. So we've got 11, 12, 13, 14, 15... How old is a six he? a sixteen finish and then seventeen eighteen nine he's got how old is he though? finishes uh he sorry done, scrolling up again he might have done it before his before his rise to pro gaming he's twenty six so yeah entirely possible I think no twenty two uh, yeah I don't it would be unlikely I don't know what the minimum age is I assume it's like eighteen. No, I don't think it's possible. You know what I'm thinking? He might have... No, that doesn't make any sense. Because he doesn't have any finishes for anything in 2020. Mm. But it's a two-year thing. So uh, he can't less. have like been gone for 2020 and then been back for 2021. Uh, yeah. I mean, maybe, he's, maybe he got an extra exemption. Saying he's back for 2021, it is August. Yeah. Like... If he had started at the end of, like, mid or end of 2019, he could totally be back now. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. He could have competed in stuff in early 2019 mm -hmm. and then came back mid-2021. Yeah. 
suppose, suppose, suppose. It's possible, but not tonight. It is. Yeah. Anyway, that's a lot of chat about someone who's uh, not a real chat. Exactly a favorite. Yeah. I don't know. It'd be cool to see him make it into yeah, Code S. Yeah. I'd be down. Yeah. I always want to like see the old, old people. The old well. guard. Yeah. Right. Gotta get him out of the retirement houses and do something. Yeah. Did I mean, Parting made it to. Well, Parting made it to the final. No, semifinal. No. Yeah, semifinal. You've got big semifinal. Big yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So some of these old dudes are capable of competing and mm -hmm. looking pretty good. Yep. Absolutely. I've excellent. I yep. You I've support seen. the old folks. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Let's, Very good. Let's pretend that's true. Very good. <sighs> so. I saw this video on Reddit the other day of uh, it was an old advertisement from the 50s for like the kitchen of tomorrow, right? Okay. So it has all these different uh, tools and implements and cooking machines and uh, there's an entire broiler that like disappears into your counter. Okay. Like you open it. So your counter is flat and you open the counter. There's like a hinge on the back mm -hmm. and it reveals and pulls up this whole broiler thing that you dump food in there and then turn it on and close it down and it cooks. Okay. Anyway, so that was happening and then somebody recommended um I mean there's on. a yeah. Is there any more about this? Like why didn't it take off? Was it just stupidly expensive and impractical? Impossible to clean. Okay. Or <laughs> you're about to tell me that everyone has one. <laughs> no, no. No, impossible to clean. Also, another thing they highlighted was a, uh, a a fryer, like for making your own donuts and stuff in your kitchen. Okay. Like they figured that would be a super, uh, super common thing. Never really took off again. Never just really. kind of. But it is possible. It is. It totally is. Yeah. So then somebody on that recommended this dude who cooks old like 1940s and 50s recipes Okay. on TikTok. So it's like these 45 second really heavily edited clips of this dude cooking like jello salad where literally you put strips of lettuce and um celery and carrots and stuff into gelatin <laughs> and then put mayonnaise on it because it's the 50s i guess i don't know what did you call it mayonnaise okay you sound a little weird that's all but you, oh. you got there eventually mayonnaise mayonnaise <laughs> Mayonnaise. Oh, you said like man mayo. You said like mayonnaise the first time. Mayonnaise. <laughs> just, just say mayo in future. I don't know. Just mayo. That'd be so mayo. Funny. Put mayo on it because it was the fifties. Uh, there's a chocolate sauerkraut cake that he cooks that he tries it and he's like, I don't taste any sauerkraut at all. So some of this stuff's gross. Mm -hmm. And some of this stuff like magically turns out good in ways that it totally shouldn't turn out okay. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I just find it interesting. I do kind of wish it was a little bit more long form because he it's again, it's 45 seconds from start to finish this whole thing, right? Right. Yeah. So we get a he takes a bite, there's a reaction, there's a couple more sentences, and then it's over. And I'm like, oh. can we get like a little little more reaction to like is there a bad aftertaste? Did you have another bite? And maybe this one was better than the first one or worse than the first one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, TikTok has its, uh, has its problems, but yeah, a lot like of this one, short form videos, I think like uh, short form video platforms, I think are just awful. I hate stories. Yes. I hate them on Twitter. I hate them on, uh, YouTube. I, I uninstalled Snapchat when I was like 19 and still used it because they introduced it. I hate it. I hate it so much. Instagram has That's because the worst. we're old people and we actually have attention spans. <laughs> Young people don't have any. It's true. Yeah. So there's this one that he makes called fake apple pie. Okay. Which I don't know if this is like depression era stuff where they're like, we can't get apples. So we're going to make do with what we have. I don't know. Apples are cheap. I can't imagine that ever being the case. But you put like 20 Ritz crackers in there. Mm. 
Like you know what Ritz is. You have those. Um, yes. Okay, they're just you know circular. Yeah, they're crackers, yeah, man. They're, they're crackers. Yeah, and then it's just you know cinnamon, lemon, you know just other random ingredients. No apples at all, and he's like, "This totally tastes like apple pie." I was like, "What? How?" One of the comments said, "Basically, apples and apple pie lose their apple flavor and just taste like cinnamon, sugar, butter, and a dash of lemon." So if you add those into something else that is soft, your brain just fills in the gaps and goes, huh, apple pie. <laughs> <Fair> <laughs> Which, I don't know, our brains are pretty good at doing that. We can definitely fill gaps in, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, look for patterns. I'm just... Fill in the blanks. Yeah. So I'm just, I don't know, I'm always interested in old-timey stuff, recipes, or uh, cars, or what, and what was, you know, popular in entertainment and stuff back mm -hmm. in the olden times, and Mm -hmm. It's just cool to see somebody. Yeah. I do. It's, you know, 40s were a bad time for everybody. <laughs> well, with the wars and all. I looked it up, and I'm mm. not finding any super consistent or reliable results. But apparently, the Apple Association was paying $2.50 for a box of apples in 1930. They were I, like, paying? Like, you brought them apples and they bought them from you? And then they would turn around and sell them individually at a store? Maybe. I don't know. Um, or that's what so it was. How many apples is, are in a box? I don't know. It doesn't say. Okay. But if we can assume at least 12, um, no one did math on stream. Let me get my calculator. Do it. Do the calculator. <laughs> okay. So let's say $2.50 divided by 12 is about 20 cents an apple in 1930. Okay. That's a lot of money. 20 cents is not like couch money. No. No. So inflation. Here, inflation That's calculator. What I'm doing. I'm on okay. It. You're on it. Point, what you got? Uh, what did I say? 20 cents? Yeah. Um, $3.25 today. Dang. So one apple was like three bucks? Yeah. Maybe they, maybe they were too expensive for the average person. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. Like $3 isn't the world, but maybe if you're making a pie, $3 for each apple adds up. Yeah. Crazy. So maybe, yeah. Maybe fake apple pie has a historical like relevance. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I would assume so. Could be. It says you buy a revolver for 20 bucks, which would be $32 or something. Or $320. What? I'm doing yeah. the inflation because it was twenty cents versus twenty bucks, or it's times it's not. Two. It's not ten dollars more than it was a hundred years ago. <laughs> Look, <laughs> this is why you don't do math on stream. You get calculators. <laughs> I know, but like oh. even I, who have terrible math skills, was like, it's only ten dollars more expensive than it was in nineteen thirty. What? <laughs> I think I said two hundred. Two hundred and ten. You did. You initially said thirty, though, and then you're like, oh no, three hundred. Yeah, that makes more sense. Mm -hmm. Maths. Mm. Maths. Yeah. Maths are important stuff. Brr. What else is going on in the world today? What else is sad and depressing about things? Mm. Uh, so there's this dude, Louis Louis Rossman. Okay. Oh, I've heard of him. Is he the iPhone repair guy? Yeah, he's the right to repair guy. Yeah. So he's this dude who owns an independent repair shop in New York City, and he started making these videos about how stupid uh anti-right to repair people are mm -hmm. like the c concept that apple would really prefer that you not repair your own apple devices and bring them to apple to get fixed right mm -hmm. um and so he always uh you know he always feels that's stupid and obviously he has some very personal investments in the concept because if you know if you can only get your stuff repaired at the original man did you just unplug your mic? Oh, sorry. You, you uh, checked it, didn't you? It unplugged and then came back. Sorry. But yeah, he's just invested, right? Because if every, you know, everything that you own must be repaired by the person who created it, then he goes out of business. So right. there, you know, obviously there's some bias here, but. Some. Yeah. Right. But uh, I think he's right. I think it is stupid to not allow third parties to repair your stuff because it's going to be cheaper and it's going to be just as good and most of the time and whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've seen yeah. a lot of this guy's videos a while ago. 
uh, he would have people send him iPhones and stuff, and he would repair them, and he would say, all this thing needed was, like, a new cable leading from this connector to this connector. It cost me, like, $35 to fix in parts, and then, like, $25 in time, because it took less than an hour. And that person would be like, I took this to Apple, and they said the phone was just dead. Like, <laughs> that I was going to have to buy a whole new one. <laughs> and like, oh, oh, that's okay. not good. So you, you want... <laughs> Uh, to deny people third-party right to repair, that way they can just buy whole new phones. <laughs> Effectively, yeah, that does happen. Yeah. So anyway, he's been branching out. He's a very opinionated guy. He's mm -hmm. not willing to, you know, he's not unwilling to have an opinion and let you know what it is. Mm -hmm. So he's made some videos too about how New York City it's still charging exorbitant amounts of rent for different spaces when you know streets are shut down. Basically, mm -hmm. there's no traffic in them. Uh, why would you ever pay $100,000 a month in rent for this office space when there's no foot traffic in the area? So mm -hmm. so that's been going on. And then also recently he's been talking about some of the corruption involving the New York City mayor, uh, Mayor Cuomo, and some of his personal attempts to address homelessness in the city. Okay. So bottom line, without getting too much into the weeds, because this is like an hour long video, but bottom line, he says that he's dug up records like open, you know, city financial records that Cuomo and his family own certain businesses that deal with homelessness, like building shelters and things like that in the city. Mm -hmm. And that he's also set up some very specific uh, donation systems where people can donate their own money uh, to go towards homelessness. Mm hmm. And he claims that like uh, ten, you know, ten to fifteen percent of that is just being skimmed right off the top directly into the bank accounts mm -hmm. uh, oh. of the people who are running it outside of the existing salaries that they're paying themselves for running these businesses. Look, these charities or businesses to help with the homelessness, yeah, they're not there to actually do anything. They're just there to raise awareness. Um, <laughs> the more people that know, the more the problem is fixed. Yeah. So if yeah. people want to give to raise awareness, then they're clearly aware of the problem and they've given something to help fix that. Thus, awareness <laughs> is raised. Uh, raised. raised. <clears throat> there you go. And that's it. Done. Mission accomplished. Yep. yep. Awareness is raised. Yep. I don't know if I've shared this on the podcast, but have I ever talked about like what's going on with homelessness and mental illness, at least in North America? Uh. I think the closest you've ever shared is that you would donate monthly to the homeless, a homeless charity in Utah. That is true. I do that. Yeah. I don't know if you still do that. You'd be lying. Um, no, that's true. Yeah. So here's the thing. Uh, for a long time in America and in Canada, I can't speak to other countries, but they had uh, mental asylums, right? Mm hmm And terrible things were happening in there. People were getting long-term committed for things like anxiety, uh, people were getting lobotomies, part of their brains were getting chopped off because they were different in some way, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of abuse, people who were in there, their families would just dump them in these asylums and then never visit them or never see them. And so they were, you know, people in there were neglected and abused in other horrible ways. And mm -hmm. just as a whole, a lot of bad stuff was happening. And so both the US and Canada were like, these are bad and we shut them down. Just completely blanket, shoop, they don't exist anymore, shut them down. The people who are in there, let them go. And then everybody said, what do we do with them? And the government's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> They're free now. We've done good. And so that's a lot of what's going on. A lot. Oh, I just is a light bulb. I think you did. Temporarily. Oh, it's back. back. It's back. I don't know what that was. Maybe. Did you kick out your light bulb temporarily? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. They look fine. Um. So that's what a lot of the homeless is. Like, yes, there are people who are homeless temporarily, right? They can hold down a job. They just need the opportunity and some time to get back on their feet mm -hmm. and get a job and they'll be back in society. Mm -hmm. Great. Those people are homeless. They can be fixed. There are also a whole bunch of people who are super drug addicts or have schizophrenia or have super bad bipolar disorder or any number of crippling mental illnesses that they really need long-term help for mm -hmm. and that giving them a home and trying to get them in a job is not going to fix anything, right? No. 
not by itself. For, not by itself, right? They need long-term care. And for some of these people, we don't have answers for it. For some of these people, we can't get them in therapy or get them in treatment. And within six months to a year, they're cured. It's going to be a super long-term thing. And maybe even for the rest of their lives, they need help, right? Right. So, yeah. So all these different cities, Montreal recently kicked all their homeless out. Uh, the Los Angeles was doing it the other day. And all we're I doing see. is shifting the homeless oh, yeah. from city to city to city. I saw police that were took out like they, to, they went to evict some homeless people off like Venice Beach or something in L.A. Yeah, they were doing it with assault rifles. It's like these people have nowhere to live. You do not need yeah. an assault rifle to tell them to move on, um, which is uh, basically what you're describing is a fun practice that I heard called Greyhound therapy where mm-hmm. you buy these people a bus ticket for the Greyhound bus company. We don't have it here, but you just put them on a bus, send them somewhere else. One way ticket, don't come back. Yeah. And that's what I mean by we're shifting it from city to city to city to city is we're giving them bus tickets and sending them away. Yeah. So here's a couple of things like Montreal did this. They did the same thing that LA did just without the guns, right? Because America, Mm-hmm. But yeah, they basically, there were thousands of homeless people camped in a center, like public park in Montreal. Mm -hmm. And the city leaders came and said, look, we have hotel rooms for you, right? You come stay there. We'll help you get clean if you want to get clean. We'll help you find jobs if you want to get jobs. And most of the people said, no, (laughs) like, we don't want those things. And it's like, okay, so what do we do now? (laughs) Right? We offered them the home. We tried to fix the homeless part of it, but that's not really what the problem is for a lot of these people. Mm -hmm. And the same thing in L.A. The L.A. government, you know, California is very progressive. They're very interested in this kind of stuff. They offered these people a place to stay Mm -hmm. and they said, no, we'd rather be free. Right. We'd rather be out on our own. We don't want to be cooped up. We don't want to be part of your governmental whatever programs you have. They don't interest us. Fuck you. And so what do you do at that point? Right. What do you do with these people? Because reddit a lot of people on reddit are like just give them homes the problem will be solved it's like no that's not what this is it's not that simple for some of them yeah definitely give them a home give them a job help them get back into society but for a lot of them that is not what's going on here right and i don't know what you do other than try to re-implement the mental asylum system and maybe have it with better oversight so there's not as much terrible rampant abuse going on. Right. I don't know. It's a hard problem. Um, yeah, if you do do that, maybe drop the word asylum. It's... <laughs> <laughs> I think it just yeah, call, call it something else. <laughs> right, right. Call it daycare. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> Um, (laughs) no yes definitely you need to call it something else mm -hmm. because the negative associations are too strong Mm -hmm. what do you do in australia do you know oh we don't have any homeless we solved that problem i don't think that's true (laughs) (laughs) definitely not true um and i definitely don't know um the closest thing i know to homelessness is that once a year i think it is there's a like an event that goes on in sydney where all the people who have homes in a show of solidarity go spend a night sleeping on the streets in Sydney. So the streets are just packed with people sleeping there. Awareness. Yeah. Awareness doesn't yeah. actually do anything to fix the problem, but is at least a measurable show of like, hey, we the people give a shit about this. Maybe we should do something like, um, you know, because it's very visible. It takes up the city. Uh, yeah. I don't know if it's happened the last couple of years because reasons. Uh, for you know. entirely unknown reasons that entirely nobody unknown can. Unknown reasons. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if like I'm gonna feel, um, I don't know, good for homeless people. At least it's warm here most of the time. Uh, you know, that's I would, true. I would hate to be homeless in Montreal or Chicago. You'll notice they're homeless in Montreal in July Uh instead of January, right? Right. (laughs) And you'll notice that California just kind of has a permanent issue with it because California has nice weather all the time. Right. Yeah. There are, there's some connections here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How about like long-term mental health? Have you heard of like, what do you do for that? Um, on a, like on a, 
massive scale i don't know on like a personal individual scale i know plenty of people that go to therapy just for like mental health well-being checks and stuff like that sure Uh, but as far as people getting committed to long term they don't leave the facility kind of care right i do not know okay i don't either because i yeah i really hang on a second i'm i'm very now terribly worried we just throw them in prison because i can remember Mm, one that happens from an artist called Joel Listix, who is incredible. He's uh, an Australian guy who writes Aussie hip-hop songs about that kind of thing, and he's very politically leaning, and he's very good songs, but he has a song about mental health and drug addiction, and in it, (laughs) there's a line that's like, she didn't need prison. She just needed some help, right? Like, yeah. And so now I'm worried that that guy knows more than I do, and that is just incredibly literal, and that's what we do with these people. Maybe Stray <laughs> just throws their mental illness people and drug addicts in prison. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we do that. America 100% does that. There are a lot of people that we throw in prison for, like, being addicted to heroin. That's rough, man. Yeah. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm looking on Wikipedia. There's a couple articles about healthcare in Australia. Okay. And... I don't see anything about long-term mental health care, so I don't know. Yeah. So anyway, my answer to this is reestablish the system of long-term mental health care have better oversight with it Mm -hmm. maybe use some of the technology today to do better monitoring because like you know in the 40s and 50s you just had to send someone to check up on it every once in a while you know right yeah whereas now you can you know have cameras and easy reporting of issues from people who are in there and it's a little easier maybe to keep an eye on things but hopefully hopefully Hopefully. yeah that song, but uh, yeah, you don't. Just before we move on, it's called yeah. uh, "How Many People." And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. If anyone wants to listen to that, highly recommend. Anyway, but it, but it's just nobody, none of the political parties in America or in Canada like talk about this. Mm-hmm. They just they see them as homeless. It's a homeless problem. Mm-hmm. It's like no, no, it's really not. It it just isn't. Isn't that obvious when you went to them and said we'll give you a home and they were like no. <sighs> Right. Well, you can't help these people because that would be health care. You can't have publicly no, health care ca- for people. In <laughs> Canada. That I'm talking about Canada. I'm talking about Montreal. Like Montreal has the universal health care. Mm-hmm. Right? And, and I, tried. you know. They go tried. ahead. They, like they tried to give them houses and stuff. Yeah. Um, so if they just want to be free, then I guess it's their choice. Well, except that they're setting things on fire and harassing people in the city and stealing stuff. Right. <laughs> it's just like, if you just sat around a campfire and sang songs, great, go for it. But uh, that's not what's going on here. That is you know? not what's going on? No. No. Again, Montreal, let them be there for a long time. Because Canada was like, this is cool. Uh-huh. We're fine with it. We respect that homeless people want their freedoms. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. after the complaints from, you know taxpaying residents started coming in they were like all right look we got to do something here Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because without the taxpayers we don't exist so yeah yeah remember he's a mess oh he says you're very quiet yeah yeah i've maybe helped fix that oh good excellent and then i immediately accidentally switched the scene by just clicking randomly away from the (laughs) settings tab (laughs) So that was great. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Uh, Perfection. Perfection. Yeah. Mm. Man, what else is going on? Uh, do, 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 do. So in more awful, there is Games Workshop yeah. and Warhammer 40k. Ooh, yeah. We can talk about that. Yeah. So they updated their intellectual property uh, rights usage for fan artists and stuff and explicitly said do not create fan made animations as only licensed fan animations through our upcoming uh streaming service 
are allowed. If you make these, we will send you cease and desist orders. Everything else is fine, as long as it's not monetized. But everything else, like animated, if it's animated, no, don't do it. Um, so people are up in arms on the Reddit. It's probably going to be like a two-week boycott and then people will forget. But uh, hopefully a lot of people buy 3D printers and it hurts their money. And then it got worse because it was basically revealed that Games Workshop, a multi-million dollar company, pays their employees £20,000 a year. Wow. Like, yeah, that's crazy low. Yeah. <laughs> um, and one of them was saying that he was there for like a year and he was about to have a kid and they asked him, he asked them, can I have a pay rise? And I think they offered him like £1,000 a year and they said... We don't really have a budget to give you anything better than that, but we do have an unlimited overtime budget. So if you just want to work more, you can. <laughs> I companies that are super tone deaf about mm -hmm. what fan art does for their brand confuse me immensely. Mm -hmm. um, the coolest thing I have ever seen to do with Warhammer was fan made. Uh huh. Astartes, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That uh, that they immediately got like they hired the guy to work on official stuff and then removed all of his things from YouTube. And if you want to watch it, they don't. If, if you want to watch it, you now have to go to their website. And if you want to see the upcoming sequel, you'll have to pay for the subscription service. <laughs> yeah. It's not better, Games Workshop. <laughs> In no way is this better. <laughs> it just hurts. Like, them and Nintendo, I think, are the two biggest mm -hmm. offenders here. What oh. on the earth? There goes your light again. And it's coming it's, back. It's Games Workshop coming for you. <laughs> like, yeah. How dare you talk about it? You know where you live. <laughs> yeah. I just... Nintendo is the same way. Mm -hmm. Like, Nintendo I think has no interest in it, fan art existing or fan animations. I think they've gotten a lot better about it. I haven't heard anything massive about it. Like the most, the most recent thing is they don't like people downloading ROMs of like Smash. They want to be like, no, you play the new game for your competitive 2D fighter. Yeah, if yeah. you want to play Smash from the Nintendo 64, get a Nintendo 64. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, what's that? We don't make Nintendo 64s anymore. Mm, that's just too bad. Oh, so dumb. Uh huh. I mean, yes, I guess, so I watch a Super Mario Maker mm -hmm. YouTube channel, and yeah, he hasn't complained about getting takedown notices from Nintendo at all, so mm -hmm. I think you mentioned recently that there was that Nintendo Partner Program for mm -hmm. YouTubers. Yep, where they took yeah. more of your 50, like at best, like 50-50 split from YouTube, and then it's like, yeah. oh, so now you get 20%, but they shut that down. We looked it up. They, that's That's done. Right. Oh, that is done. And yeah. yet, there aren't any problems that I've heard from that community. So, yeah, th yeah that was one thing I never understood. Like, <laughs> you really don't get that other people watching someone play your games, like, incentivizes them to play your games someday. Mm -hmm. Like, I just don't. Yeah. I like... Tra oh, trailers only. Only trailers <laughs> can incentivize someone to play our games. That's it. Yep. Everything True. else is bad. <laughs> yeah, like... I've always liked Warhammer. I've read a couple books. I never had any minis. And then Astartes came out, and it was mind-blowingly good for one guy making it. And then yeah. I bought uh, 1,600 points worth of Ultramarines. And... I didn't realize that's what got you into it. That that was... It, it was that, and then the opportunity for the specifically the box that came out, where it's like, hey, we're doing a great deal. You get, like, $1,100 worth of minis for, like, 300 <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, that's a good way to help someone get into it too. Yeah. So that that was like the final push, and now I can't watch it on YouTube. <laughs> I, I don't want to go to your website to watch it. Let me watch it where I first saw it. That has yeah. the proper music. They also butchered the music in the final scene because it was like licensed for YouTube copyright or something, and then they couldn't get it for their own website. It's weird. But the final scene, the music is different, and it's worse. <laughs> great victory guys i hope you had a meeting about this and we're like we did a great thing here mm -hmm. we really won this
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, if it's any consolation, the guy that made a study went from having a Patreon that was paying something like... I think thirty thousand dollars a month to a twenty thousand pound a year <laughs> position. No, that's also bad. That, that is also bad. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably in an exclusivity contract and cannot leave. Oh, that is sad. Everything about this story is sad. This is a sad podcast. It turns out. It really is. Mm-hmm. Man. Yeah. All right. Well, hmm. Good times. So, uh, I don't know if this continues on the trend, but have you ever heard the term himbo before? Himbo. It's like a male yeah. version of a bimbo. Yeah. Yeah. So I started seeing this on the internet maybe a month or so ago. Wow. And I was like, wait, what? What? What is this? Yeah. You've been hearing it for a long time? Yeah. Welcome to 2015. <laughs> oh, I wasn't around. I must have been out of the internet in 2015. You, you were asleep that year. Yeah, it was Rip Van Winkling it. So, anyway, so I saw this thing and I was like, okay, so is this... Is this women in direct response to men objectifying them for all time? Mm. Being like, let's us do some objectifying too. Right. Because it's only fair, right? Is oh, that... Wow. Like, that's oh. what I understand it to be. Okay, okay. Uh, himbo, the portmanteau of the words bimbo and uh, him... It yes. is a slang term for attractive but vacuous man. The first known date usage goes back to 1988. Yeah. So it's been around for a while. Himbo's been around since 88? Yeah. <laughs> Dang. Yep. Okay. Well, that's... Uh, I am... I am way out of... <laughs> <laughs> I feel disconnected now. Huh. There you go. Anywho. Mm-hmm. So, oh. I don't know. I Here's the thing. I'm a dude. Uh-huh. So, I don't have the perspective of a woman. Mm-hmm. But I just... It's a little foreign to me, this concept of, like, I feel oppressed by another people. Mm-hmm. And in response, I'm going to do the same thing they're doing to them. Uh-huh. And it's just like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I'm coming from a place of privilege, obviously. It, it's probably just more that himbo is now just a stereotype along with bimbo. And it's not a matter of, let's do it to them. It's, let's write these male characters that are like this. Like, let's just write characters like this. So I looked up a list. And it's like Scott Lang from the MCU's Ant Man, right? Like he's a himbo. Kronk from The Emperor's New Groove. Yeah, or Joey Tribbiani from Friends. Yeah. Do you Which, think they were written with the intent of being himbo? Um, whether or not they knew the word and were der- intentionally trying to fill a himbo role, I don't know. But like, they mm. definitely fit into it, and I think these characters were written intentionally. Because I've seen lists. Of like recently, I've seen lists of people who are like these are himbos. Okay, but I know I don't know. I never really thought that the writers intentionally wrote them as such. It's just like because I saw this as a definition started recently and was applied to past characters right. that already exist, right? Okay. But if you're telling me that it's existed since '88, then sure, it's entirely possible that some of these characters or all of them were written with this particular definition in mind. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Anywho, yeah. I don't know. It just, it really, uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I understand that both men and women uh, are super, like, into attractive people that they're attracted to, right? Mm-hmm. It's not like only men see someone that they're attracted to and they're like, holy smokes, that's a sexy person, right? Right. Yeah. So, like, everybody does that. It mm-hmm. just feels like overtly making it a cultural thing was really a dude thing for most of the time. Sure, yeah. And that there was a response to it by making it a, a well, female thing. The, the I guess the, the opposite argument there is if it's a cultural male thing to 
uh, uh, objectify these women as bimbos. And then... But if, it, like, it assumed, like, the argument assumes that men and women are equal standards. But if they're not, a guy himbo is not a bad thing. Mm. He's just a celebrated male who gets lots of ladies. That's, like, the opposite, like, because the standards are different, that they weren't writing these characters to objectify them. They were writing them to glorify men that are like this. Okay, so is bimbo the same thing? Is, no, do you write bimbo characters to honor them, or are we I very being much doubt disrespectful? It. I, I assume disrespectful. Yeah. typically. So, <laughs> right, like, so it's like oh. we're doing the same thing men have done, except it's better, and well, we're essentially taking the same term they've used uh, and just tweaking it a little bit. I, I, right? I, I'm talking about the characters that were written with a himbo personality mindset, but not without the context, like, but written without the context of himboism. <laughs> <laughs> which is not a word I thought I would say today, but <laughs> <laughs> fair. Um, like friends, Joey is a player in every scene. He has a different woman on his arm. He's definitely a himbo, but I don't think he was strictly meant to uh, be like, it's not supposed to be a, um, like a dig at him. It's, it's a good thing for him. And I think characters that wrote him maybe subconsciously, maybe intentionally, wanted to evade that as a good thing. If they did, I think they would have more characters be like him, but it isn't, so it's probably relatively neutral in practice. Um, yeah, I don't know where I'm going with this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting. <laughs> well, I, I, I just say, like, you, you, you try to judge uh, intent with... Yes. Which is hard. It's, it's always hard. I, I understand that there is absolutely probably some himbos out there that you can point to and be like, yes, he was intended to be deprecating. But I don't know. Like, I just keep thinking of Legally Blonde, where it's like at the start of the movie, she's like this ditzy airhead. And then at the uh -huh. end, she's not. She's a, like a legal genius or whatever. Well, but she's a ditzy airhead who gets amazing grades. Like it's a real interesting character that way, right? Sure. But she's just. She's not dumb. Well, she's not intelligent. Like her, well, she is intelligent what? by the end. Excuse me, but at wait, the wait, start, wait, wait, wait. but at the start of the movie, she's absolutely written that her boyfriend is like, you couldn't get into Harvard if you tried, right? Like, yeah, he's that's because like, he doesn't he doesn't rec see her for the smart person that she is. Right, but then they have like six studying montages. It's not like she was just smart and said, you know what, I can do this. She like. <laughs> She had to work. She had to work. Go figure. People getting into law school have to work for it. <laughs> right? Like, yes. There's a transformation absolutely. progress is what I'm saying. Process. Absolutely true. Yeah. But you can't be a stupid person and get into law school by studying for six weeks. You have to be smart already. Mm. I don't know that the movie portrays her as being particularly brilliant. You think the movie was like, we're going to take this super dumb, ditzy person with no intelligence at all. Not zero Make her hit the books. She knows how to breathe. Make her hit the books for six weeks. No. Make her hit the books for six weeks, and now she's in law school. Yeah, that's what they do, because she switches that's major crazy. to law school. She does it entirely because she gets dumped by her, her himbo boyfriend. Doesn't she need good grades to get into law school? Or they only care about the no, they, test they, score. Um... Just Tesco's, I think. I think there was like a. I, I don't know. It's the American. But if you're system. like getting D's and C's because you're dumb and you don't <laughs> understand math or English or chemistry, she switches and from then like you... a fashion major to like uh, uh, to law. I don't think don't. it's like wrong to say she's uh, uh, it's super intelligent, right? Like she's not a genius, but she has no. a different goal and then has to study for a different topic. You can't just be smart and be like, you know what? Because I'm smart, I can just read a bunch of books, and now I know the law. <laughs> yeah, but it, you can. It's a lot easier to do it than if you're dumb. Sure, but it's not what she was about in the start of the movie. That's all. <sighs> okay, we got distracted. <laughs> a little bit. But you're saying that her boyfriend at the start is a himbo. Yeah, he's completely vacuous. Yeah. So here, yes, yes. So here's another example, right? Chris Hemsworth in the Ghostbusters 2016 movie. Sure. Yeah. He's entirely written to be dumb and super attractive, and that's all he is. And yep. it's a direct, it's a direct comparison to all the female parts that have been written that way in films over the years, right? Yeah, I think that's definitely one where you can claim intent of uh, himboism. Yeah, 
Right, but... I don't know. I just don't like the idea of writing a character solely to be hot and dumb. It okay. j it feels gross. Like I've never liked it. Have you seen Two and a Half Men? No. Okay. Charlie Sheen's character sleeps with a different woman every week, and they're all hot and dumb. Yeah, absolutely. But 100%. they're not characters. They're just uh, candy is conquests. <laughs> oh, there are characters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, and I don't. I don't know. I don't like it. I just, I don't like being against its use f for women characters in the past and then flipping it around and being like, we're going to do it to men now mm -hmm. because it's okay. You don't like the fight fire with fire. Uh, I really don't. Mm -hmm. I don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know you can fight forest oh. fires with fire? It's interesting. Yes, and create fire breaks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you burn some existing land, and then the fire can't spread because it's already burned. Checkmate, atheists. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Something. I guess I just, I don't know. In general, I think if you're fighting a moral, if you're trying to fight for a moral right, mm -hmm. right? Like you're saying the way that women are treated in media is bad. Okay, that's a moral position to take. Mm -hmm. And I agree with it. But to be like, and we're going to do the same thing that these people we're claiming are immoral are doing... Mm -hmm. Then, it, it, again, this is me. This is my personal opinion. I feel like it kind of devalues your position a little bit. Mm. I think maybe their intention is not these characters are immoral, but these characters are just bad, right? And not the characters, but the people who are designing the bad characters. No, no, no. no, no. I'm saying that the pe people think that this kind of character archetype is bad. And so if we uh -huh. flood the market, people will get sick of it. And they'll change, uh -huh. right? Like, it's not that it's immoral. It's just boring, right? Like, it's overplayed. Uh -huh. um, and if it's fair game, it's fair game, right? Like, they're just being like, if you guys can do this to us, we can do it to you, or vice yeah. versa. And if it's fair game, it's fair game. Sure, but what that implies is we do this to you, and you can keep doing that to us, and we're cool with it. We're not going to complain anymore. I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm just saying, anybody who's like, the portrayal of women in media has been bad. They've been prepared as vacuous and hot for too long. Mm -hmm. But they're also okay with it for men is like, okay, well, either you're okay for with all of it or you're okay with none of it. Pick a lane. <laughs> That's how I feel. Okay. Um, I, I have a feeling that they're okay with it with all of it. Um, okay, good. They, yeah. <laughs> they, they don't Done. have a problem with, the, with it itself. It's just when it becomes too prevalent that it's the only thing people see female characters in movies and TV shows are. Um, I mean, that's not the case. It, it's a Especially matter of now. diversity like in roles. Sure. Right, that's definitely not the case. Uh, but now, no. we, but now, if you're suddenly seeing a lot more himbo characters, then we're just evening those scales. Because now we have more himbo characters when before we just didn't. Yeah, and I'm cool with that. There if you you're go. like, it's stupid that the only vacuous hot characters are women, we should have men doing this too, mm -hmm. then great. I support that concept. That's wonderful. Excellent. All right. Glad we got it figured out. Reached Good job, an agreement. Us. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, I think we're out of time then. Uh, yeah, sure. Excellent. Well, thanks for joining us for a moderately depressing, maybe more serious <laughs> episode of the podcast than usual this week. But uh -huh. um, uh -huh. uh -huh. Samacard agrees. That's an accurate assessment it's true uh i just want to say join us next week for the fantastic episode 200 <gasps> 200th episode 200th episode yeah with special guest arnold schwarzenegger uh close enough yeah i mean he's he's pretty schwarzenegger -y. yeah um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh. Not, you think arnold schwarzenegger if he didn't go to the gym and played StarCraft. Oh, that's a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people who don't go to the gym and play StarCraft. <laughs> that we know. <laughs> I'll narrow it down again. People Not narrow down at all. Nope. Too many options. Okay. All right. Well, if you feel like supporting the podcast directly, check it out at patreon.com slash somicron. And also the Falcon Paladin store website is still up and available for you to look at your Falcon Paladin merch. Mm-hmm. And until next time, as always, thanks for hanging out with us. Have a great week, and you take care of yourselves. Bye. Bye.